Hey everyone, this is Axfield here. With today's video, I'm going to give you some advanced tips that you can apply within your game in Farthest Frontier. So these tips apply mainly from mid game to the later game, but I'm sure it's gonna give you a boost in your gameplay and to help you progress further. So the first tip that I would like to give you guys is that you've got a capability of building multiple deep mines on one single vein of material that you want to extract whatever material you want to extract so there are two things that to keep in mind before you can do that you've got to reach tier level 4 of the town center to be able to to build the deep mines and the second thing is the vein that you want to extract from it has to be an infinite vein but depending on how big the vein is you can place multiple deep mines on it maybe even three or four uh, of those uh, deep mines and you will be able to supply your city even if you go over a thousand population you'll be able to supply them with all the materials that they need going forward your hunting cabins can be upgraded and then also they will have the ability to craft and set uh, traps so once you reach town center tier level 2 you've got the capability of upgrading your hunting cabin but they only really start to function properly once you get a tier 3 town center because that's when you can craft your own iron and you're going to need the iron to to build the traps and also to set them so i would say it works best once you reach level tier level 3 of your town center but you can also obviously trade the iron um, from the merchants that comes through your town uh, just to supply your hunter with the, the necessary iron but when your population gets bigger it does become a necessity to get extra meat uh, from some place because people go through food very quickly so uh, the hunting cabins with the additional traps that you set they will provide you with additional meat and leather that you can use after you reach tier level 4 with your town center you've got the capability to build a guild hall now if you do supply your guild hall with workers and also with paper you can boost any type of industry that you want so the favorite industry that i want to or that i like to boost is the raw materials where they get the minerals and uh, i just feel like it's the most effective placing it in that slot but it's up to you you can mix and match play around with it you've got only one industry that you are able to boost so you've got to choose it see what works best for you but that is a nice way to keep your production running smooth at the later stage of the game you're going to have to supply your civilization with an excess of planks so once you get to the later stages of the game you do use a whole lot of planks to do upkeep of your buildings you do use the planks for multiple items that you've got to craft and build so wood planks you go burn through it really quickly so you're going to need to have once you get to i would say of a population of 750 plus you're going to need at least four sawmills that's fully supplied with workers to be able to keep up with the the plank demands also with your wagoneers you do need the planks to just build the wagons itself so there's a whole bunch of items that you're going to need to use planks for so make sure that you've got enough sawmills and enough workers to work in the sawmills to supply your village or your city with the planks that it needs as your civilization progress you're going to have to balance your builders and your labor workforce so ideally i would say uh, the best thing to do is to always ensure that you've got at least 15 to 20 percent of your total population assigned as laborers and also that you've got at least five percent that you assign to as builders so you do need builders not just for building the buildings but also to manage the upkeep of all the buildings that is within your civilization so just you're gonna probably set out 20 to 25 percent of your total population that's going to just work as laborers and builders but it's an ongoing thing that you've got to balance obviously as your city grows you've got to also continuously increase the labor force as well as the builder workforce now one great way of how you can add laborers to your labor force is that you can go to your resource management screen by pressing r and once you are at that menu you can see all the resources that you've got available and you can go to the specific resource that you want to set a quota for so for example let's go to the beer and i'm going to press on the beer and then you can see the minimum quota that you want to supply and also the maximum so i've set my maximum to 300 so what happens once i've reached the maximum quota of 300 my villagers would stop producing beer 
and then those villagers that worked at the brewery they will then automatically be assigned as laborers aside from the obvious benefits that you get by placing the relics within a temple another benefit that you can get from these relics once it's placed in the temple it also improves the spirituality of your population so when you for every relic that you install within the temple you get additional 50 percent spirituality boost but in order to place a relic within the temple you need a worker assigned for each relic placed in the temple so once you've upgraded the temple you can host or hold with up to three relics so that means you're going to need to have three workers also to manage uh, the relics uh, so to speak but then ultimately you'll be able to boost your spirituality up to 155 50 percent uh, which is a great increase for your village in itself and pretty much you'll have to you only need to place then one temple within your village to completely supply or uh, fulfill the, the spirituality need of your population now a great way to manage your dying villages is to build a crypt so once you reach tier 4 of your town center you've got the capability of placing a crypt on your graveyard now what's really awesome about the crypt it's not too big but it can host or hold up to 2000 bodies within the crypt so that's a good way to manage uh, i want to say the working surface if you don't want your whole town covered with graveyards all over over a period of let's say 100 years you're gonna have so many graveyards so ideally it's better to place a crypt in your graveyard or multiple graveyards just to keep your population not from taking up too much space just by placing graves well that's for me guys there's just a few tips advanced tips that's on the latest stage of the game that you can use and apply within your game in father's frontier if you did enjoy these tips and it helped you please do remember to press the like and subscribe button as well as the bell notification to stay updated on similar videos to these i also do series and playthroughs so you can go check that out as well but thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye